Well, Robert L. Dean, who do we have with us today? Well, we are blessed to have two wonderful people who I work with on a daily basis. And um, I felt it was important for us to acknowledge what this duo is doing. This okay. is the father and daughter duo. What? And I think it's special because um, when you see families that work together uh -huh. and you see um, the productivity of, of what they're doing, mm -hmm. um, the um, positive influence. Positive. Yes. Mm -hmm. We hear so much on the news about the negative, mm -hmm. but we rarely hear about the positive, and I think this is newsworthy. All right, I, we all want right. people in all the 20 countries to know about these two individuals. Can we can we also let the last one, the 21 countries? Oh, we're know, 21 now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. 20, we want the 21 countries, okay. wherever you guys are. I like. I want you to forget Istanbul or you know something. Right. There'll be one of those smaller countries that be upset right. because you don't forgot. Okay, that. I'm sorry. We want all of you who are listening across the world uh -huh. to 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 get a chance to be introduced to these wonderful people, and it's it's a, a wonderful coach named Mr. Charles James and his daughter, Miss Charlize C.C. James. Good morning, good morning, good early morning for C.C. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show. <laughs> good morning to both of you guys. We, we, we appreciate you guys having us on the show this morning. Well, well good morning. Hey, C.C. Hey. And that's Shishi. That's, that's, she. that's what I call it, Shishi. How you doing, C.C.? Good. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, now, how old are you, CC? I'm 17. Oh, you're 17, and and uh, uh, you and your daddy still get along? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, we get along real good. You get along real good. Her daddy gets along with um. I don't think there's any young people that don't get along well, well, with I'm, the father. You know, I'm, I'm just like, you know. Uh, they I'm, may not I'm get a, along with me, yeah. but they get along with him. He's, he's a but, nice coach. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm, a fa I'm a father, so I got I to gotta talk to the father. We can really have a father-to-father -father, so, oh, yeah. conversation. So, so <laughs> father, how, how do you handle having a 17-year-old beautiful daughter uh, with, uh, and, and all these young boys just hovering around her like, like honeybees? How do you handle that? Well, first of all, I want to say, uh, thank you to the pandemic. It's helped out a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's kept her in the house and away from all boys for a whole almost two years now. Yes. Oh so, yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that, that helped a lot. But no, she's a she's a very good girl, and mm -hmm. we, and um, and I I teach her. You know, we talk daily about um, you know being respectful and things of that nature and carrying yourself a certain way, and um, she's doing that. Um, very well and, and doing everything we asked of her. So uh, she demands respect and hopefully one day a respectable young man will be <laughs> my, my son-in-law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but once, he get past, once he get past that rifle of, yeah, or that, yeah, that gun see, he got. See, see, I always talk to the fathers and I always, you know, my daughter get mad because I'm like saying, now, see, this is what you do. When a young man come over to visit, I try to come over because he got to come over and meet you, right? You, yeah. you get to a dark place in the house and, and just have a light on your chair and a light on the other chair. And make oh, sure he's Lord, sitting in the other chair. Jesus. And then you just talk to him like, how you doing, and son? And you've been scared it's, him away. It's, it's, it's all well, you know? Just be just the nice father. And then at, at the end of the conversation, you're like, son, so what is your full government name? And then you just, <laughs> you, you, you reach down real low and you pull out like an AKA-47 bullet. Oh, God. And you pull out a Sharpie and you write... His name on the bullet, and then you put it up on your mantelpiece and say, "Now, son, I'm giving you one of my most precious gifts. As long as you bring her back and she's happy, you good. But if not, realize there's a bullet with your name on it." Oh, whoa! <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, yes, that's mighty powerful this morning. Yeah, I've been saying, you know, yes, we're at, talking to edu yeah, he's an educator. Yeah, me too. Like, I know you are. Yeah, but you wanted them other ones. Uh, what do you mean other ones? You know, you, you, you I, I'm just real. You, 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 you know, real, you real. I, I think that if more fathers would literally have real conversations with young men, if young men respect, they don't have no problem. They'd be like, "Ooh, can you write my other name on it? Because uh, uh, that's going to be a, a keepsake for me. Right. You know, if they don't want to, I always say if, if a young man has got good intentions, they never have a problem with meeting the parents. They never have a problem with sitting down with adults because right. the bottom line, they're going to do everything right, and we're going to be good. They come over for dinner, you know, have some tea and crumpets, you know, even go to a game with us if we need them to, huh? Hey. See? I, we have, you know, I also coach football. So yes. 
she has she has about 30 other brothers see <laughs> yes yes and and and, and we were going to transition into him being yeah. a coach he is a state championship coach uh -huh. for the oldest high school in san diego and um the second oldest public high school in california so he is he's historic Okay, so I'm I'm gonna go in and I'll say so. Uh, Cece, being a, being a part of a athletic family and a good looking athletic family, how do you balance off school athletics and social activities? Honestly, um, it's just with the support I have. Um, it's kind of just I work as hard as I can. If I need help, I go to them. Um, they help me as much. <clears throat> as much as they can and we kind of just work together as a family it's not really as much stress on me because i know i have these people that i can go to to help me out so it's really easy to balance it off all right now do you have any do you have any siblings yes i have a little sister you have a little sister yes yeah, Gigi. now now is Gigi is uh, is she going in the same realm as you mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. oh well y'all y'all just shook your head like she don't Gigi don't want to run <laughs> GG ain't running? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> now, 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 one thing I want to address, too, is that Coach James' wife and CeCe's mom is a Hall of Fame runner for Tulane University, a Morris Tiger, um, the first young lady to win four straight CIF's titles in the 400 for San Diego. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. so she comes from a great support system. And what I like most ab about Coach James and um, his wife, Lana mm -hmm. James mm -hmm. is there are my assistant coaches as well, mm -hmm. but they allow um, me to be the coach and they support and they do their jobs as well. And I think it's very important because you have a lot of parents that are watching that have to learn to allow their, their kids to be coached and to allow their kids to be taught by others. We know your little Johnny is wonderful, but little Johnny may not be a starter. <laughs> let, let, let's talk about that as a coach dealing with parents you know, overzealous parents who sometimes may want to live their life through their children. Yes, indeed. You know, and, and you, we're, we're here in James Studios. This is this is Lana's section of the house, right? right? See, that's uh, a, that's I, I was checking stuff. that out. Yes. This is her wall. Cece has her wall. I have my wall. Yeah. Gigi says she's not going to have a wall. But, right. <laughs> but, um, po yeah, Gigi. You know, at, at you know, at, at some point, you know, parents have to, you know, let their coaches coach and one thing about Coach Dean, Coach Dean seen Cece, I think she was two or three years old. Yep. And we were at a track meet and she she used to come to practice and just watch. I never coached her at this time. She's just watching me coach and she's picking up all the things. And she used to set up a rug in the hallway, run down the hallway and jump over this rug. I'm like, wow, you know, this is crazy. So I showed Coach Dean one day. She was like three years old. Yep. And I said, and he said, who's that? I said, that's Cece. He goes, what? <laughs> and so he's he's going in. I said, Coach Dean, I said, I, I want you to coach my daughter. He goes, man, I don't know if I'll be coaching that long. He said, I, I, I might be retired by then. I said, well, listen, if you still coaching, you have to coach her. And, and you know, it all, all the stars are lined up. And he's coaching her. And now he's taking her to a state championship and has one more season. And, it, and it's great how everything worked out that way. But I, I, I knew that I trust um, Coach Dean with her because I know his coaching techniques and I know how he works hard for the kids. And a lot of times you get a lot of coaches that um, that just has all the all-stars but don't really know what they're doing. So mm -hmm. sometimes I think um, as parents, what they need to do is find out who really coaches their kids and not just has all-star teams Come and, on. and look for development. Um, so th that's, that's one thing that we, I get on my side and coach Dean gets on his side a lot. It's just a lot of parents, you know, they don't want to give that opportunity and, and trust the coach. And I try, and her first coach ever in track was Dakota Gross, who you guys just had on yes. um, um, this week. Yes. So CC came from a great, um, base of coaches, mm -hmm. um, at a young age, then to the high school age, and hopefully she'll get to the, the college stage and, and continue to be around these great coaches. But it's a lot that went into it. So let me ask you, Cece, what are your events? Um, I run the 100 hurdles, the 300 hurdles. Um, 
I do a little long jump here and there, uh, and that's like my main stuff. Okay, so you a jumper. She she does yeah. a triple jump. Yeah. Yeah. She runs the relays. What she run the relays too? Oh yeah, she she she's she's well 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 versed and uh, uh, her, her 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 father mm -hmm. and, and and mom they 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 saw fit that she's a um a student well, athlete yeah. student athlete that is that has a good foundation she has a good head on her shoulder 4.0 mm -hmm. GPA um All right, student very athlete. very easy to coach she does whatever anyone asks her and um I was blessed to um to meet a young man named coach Patricio Flats who is my hurdles coach mm -hmm. And um, I gave him his first job, an opportunity, and it's been a blessing. Um, he's done a great job with our hurdlers. He's had a CIF finalist probably the last nine or ten or ten years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I got I got some more questions I want to ask CC. Yeah. Help so so CC, uh, track fashion. Uh, uh, are you, have you got into track fashion? And what's your what's your signature look? Okay. Um, <laughs> so usually I have a slick back bun um, uh -huh. with like Nike, Nike stuff on. I don't really have a look, but my main thing that I'm really known for is my slick back. I always wear slick back buns, so. Okay. I like to wear for track. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Uh, knowing that your mom was an athlete too, what, and your dad, what uh, uh, type of things have you learned or taken from them and incorporated in your imaging and in your style? Um, as in like fashion wear or fashion running start uh, warm ups, you know, because you know, like you'll see like a LeBron James and he always uh, get the thing and he'll clap it up, you know, with the powder. Yeah. Uh, what what signatures have you gotten from your 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 parents? Um, I don't think any. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really taken any like signature things from them, um, but they have helped me a lot with like technique type stuff, but. I'm usually doing my own thing when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I usually take into my own little realm when it's, like, more of my signature. Okay. They have their own little stuff they used to do. So. Right. So here's my next question. You're, you're, you're in uh, the studio. Whose wall has the most awards? Okay. Uh, I, I believe so. And he's competitive. He's I don't know. It's probably the same. It's probably the same. Okay. So, so do you, do you feel that in the future your wall will outshine everybody else's wall? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my, my, my question, and this is not, I don't want you to come off cocky, uh, but I just want to ask the question. Uh, do, do sometimes you look over at the wall and like saying, if you only knew what's coming next? Um, that's not her. <laughs> I'll say no because I'm not really cocky, so I don't really think that way. I just think of it as something that we should all celebrate. I don't really think of it as like, oh yeah, like I have the best wall, you know. So, okay, right. here's here's my last question to you: Have you ever challenged any of your parents in a race? Yes, all the time, and he won't let me race him anymore because he knows I'll beat him. So I'm he undefeated. Just, he wants to go. That's <laughs> Now he does the challenging. It don't be her. It be him challenging. I'm gonna be yeah, but um, yeah, I used to a lot, but now they don't really let me race them anymore because they want to go off as like, oh, you never beat me. So she, right. she waited till I till I gained too much weight and got older. Right. Okay. <laughs> then she couldn't touch him. Now, now my question to you is, who has inspired you, CC, um, in track and field, um, whether it's growing up or whether it's currently? Um, many people inspired me. My parents inspired me. Yeah. My coaches inspired me. Um, my old teammates inspired me. My teammates now inspired me. A lot of people have. So, see, All that's right. one thing about this young lady. Mm -hmm. She is. She is the ultimate leader. Without, she's not a person that would just talk and, and mm -hmm. be the the verbal kind of leader. Mm -hmm. She leads by example. And, and I watch her as the head coach. I stand back and watch. Mm -hmm. And I see her interaction with the other athletes. Mm -hmm. That's why I know that um, she's, she's special and she's different. Because you get a few athletes in your lifetime who cares almost more about the team than they do themselves. And she's, she's one of those kind of athletes. She's like one band, one sound. Uh, you know, I, you yeah, know. well, you know, that, that's a good good way to say it as well. Okay. She she, she cares about her teammates. Um, mm -hmm. I I watch her interact with them, and I I watch mm -hmm. how she she encourages them 
Because one thing about our program at San Diego High, for many of you parents that go for big name schools and hype, we are a school who develops and nurtures this is this young people. You know, info commercial is the fact. <laughs> we, we nurture young people, and we don't get all the youth track stars, but uh -huh. um, many times we beat the kids who uh -huh. were mm -hmm. youth track stars because we coach them up. Yeah. And, so, uh, and, and, and I, I, I'm glad to be in an environment that is co co conducive to, mm -hmm. to helping and, and, and teaching mm -hmm. because that's what coaching is really all about. Like we yeah. said earlier, mm -hmm. anybody can get a bunch of athletes that are good and manage them, but mm -hmm. where's, where's development and coaching? Okay, so with that in mind, uh, 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 Dad, I want to ask the question. I want to know if you can coach me in, in the, uh, the eight-inch run. Huh? Uh, uh, it's it's a new it's a new uh, a new uh, whole uh, new thing of track and field for huh? us more challenged uh, athletes. Uh, I, I'm trying to get a quick start on my eight inch run. Can, can you coach me on that one? Well, the eight inch run should be a step. <laughs> <laughs> right. So put them in a wheelchair. <laughs> see, see, you they, wrong. Got, they got you, wheelchair you're races. Wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. I ain't talking to you right now. <laughs> Next one. C C C. <laughs> See, see, Robert, Robert just, <laughs> we got company, Robert. I'm okay, not going to deal okay, with it. Okay, I'll act right. So, so Cece, uh, two-part question. <laughs> Number one, if you could meet uh, three, oh, no, I'm going to give you a choice of four uh, uh, athletes, what would be your four top athletes that you would want to meet? Okay. Um, Allison Felix, I already met her, though, yeah. before. So I would love to meet her again. Um, Sydney McLaughlin, um, Muhammad. And LeBron James. Okay, all right. And Maha is that Muhammad Ali? It's Delilah. She's uh, a track. She's a okay. four hundred. She was a former four hundred. Okay. Um, hurdler, a rec world record breaker too. It got broke recently. Okay. And then my second question, if 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 I was to ask you the top five colleges that you would be interested in going to, what would those be? Oh, that's a good okay. question. Um, that is kind of hard for me to answer because I. I do have some colleges that I love, but mm -hmm. for me, it's like I love any college that mm -hmm. tries to talk to me, and I'll give them all a chance. So it's kind of hard for me to be focused on a lot, but like for dream colleges, I can't answer that. Okay. Like, so like LSU, um, UCLA, um, USC, those are like my dream, top dream colleges mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I would love to go to. But for me, it's like I give any college a chance, so it's kind of hard for me to answer like what I have. Um, you know, that's good parenting. You, 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 that's you, good you, parenting. You know, you know, Dad. Dad, she didn't say too lame, but we ain't gonna talk about that. We'll talk about that later. But Dad, one of the things I really love about what I'm seeing with Cece is that um, I believe that she is uh, very media ready, and I think that with a lot of our athletes, they're not ready to talk and be in media, mm -hmm. and that plays a major role in their career. So, uh, Cece, I want to applaud you. Uh, it's early in the morning, but as um, if I say that uh, I look at athletics as a business, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and uh, and the business includes your grade point averages, uh, the way you carry yourself, the way you speak, the way you present yourself, and I, today I would tell you you got an A plus from me, you know what I'm Thank saying, you. and I want you to keep up the good work. And Dad, um, um, I love Family Affair, uh, I love Family Affair, and to let you know. Uh, uh, Coach Dean will love you to death, but he has partners all around him that will support um, uh, the efforts. And we support what you're doing and your family is doing in any way that we can be of service or help to you. Please let us know because we, we, we already know. We already see Olympic already all, all over her. Oh, oh that, that, I do too. So, I'm, so, I'm, that's, uh, that's true. You know, uh, you know, I'll be teasing people like I'm gonna get her own theme song. So she'll be coming in. And everybody, like, what's that thing? But oh, that's her theme song. She didn't even write it. Oh, somebody Lord. else wrote it for her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what people don't know about Cece is Cece is also a accomplished dancer. What? 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 What styles of of dance do you do? Um, I do ballet and modern. Okay. See, Cece, I I got this wicked step move. You know, oh you know, I, I, you know, it, it, you know. I got this wicked step move. I, I don't know if you get get with it, but, but it's not a know. it's not a dance. The step move, huh? It's not a full dance, just a step move. Yeah, that's. A, I, I got the eight inch, uh, uh, eight inch, and I got the eight inch relay. Those are my two events. Yeah. And <laughs> and then I got the wicked the wicked move the w wicked step move. That's. I don't got moves. I just got one. Okay, you got like a flinch. 
<laughs> now, Coach James, I, I, you, you're admirable in what you do. Let's talk about you as a coach. What inspired you to be the coach that you are? Because I see you in the grinding stages where you're calling schools, reaching out to schools for your football players like I do with track. Let's talk about you as a coach because CeCe has to see the, see you all. His, your wife being a former head track coach at Moore's and then you being a coach at Santa Clara and Moore's, she had to see examples. Right. I, um, what inspired me to coach, um, I had some great coaches. Um, coach John Shackley at Morris High School was the first coach that I've seen that, you know, I, I looked at and was like, I want to be. That was um, my uncle used to play for Morris High School, and Morris at the time was this monstrous mm -hmm. and dominant across the, yeah. the nation. Yeah. And um, I, seen, I seen this little guy walking around, and he's just conducting all these guys, and they're listening to him. And I said, man, I want to be that, you know. Um, it just was, was something cool to me. I didn't know what came with it, and I didn't know how it was supposed to be done, but it was very inspiring. Um, then a coach named Coach Glenn Goins, who was my coach um, in youth, was the one who really inspired me as far as how to be a coach and how to be more than a coach as far as a counselor, a mm -hmm. father figure, uh, you know, and just helping kids out in need. Um, helped me out a lot. As um, far as, you know, went all the way through my whole journey as far as um, playing football and stuff like that. And also a lot of my brothers, my teammates, just um, if we if we needed money for lunch, if we needed a ride, if we needed anything like that, he was there for multiple kids. And he really inspired me to say, OK, this job goes more than in X's and O's. Um, then I met Coach Bob Perone, um, very compassionate um, and you know, would do anything to get kids to the college level. Mm -hmm. He was at um, Santa Cruz High School. Um, and I was seeing him put guys in the college that didn't believe that they can go to college. And then they came back and like he has guys he coached that are community leaders who are political people now and all kind of things that um, they would never even think about. So when you think about Coach James, you pretty much taking all the coaches that coached me from the high, from the pop Warner youth level all the way to the college level um, that, that I took a little piece of each mm -hmm. one of them um, and, and pretty much came up with what I wanted to design myself as, as a coach. And um, so it, it was a collaboration of John Shackley, Coach Glenn Goins, Bob Crow, and um, John Robinson, who is the great John Robinson oh, yeah. from UFC. And, um, those those coaches are who molded me and who I am today. Right. So let me ask you this question: um, Being that you're a coach, you also become a mentor, an uncle, a father. How do you balance your time with your family as well as your family that your extended family? Very hard, um, but I have a, a great supporting cast, and what we try to do is we try to make you know our coaching environment our family mm -hmm. and with that you know what i mean by that like when lana was a, a a head track coach well cc you know was with us through the whole way so um she would come to all the track meets and all the kids would know her so our family was always around each other mm -hmm. um football is a little bit harder because i'm on the field and they're in the stands but Charlize went to football games her whole life and, you know, she said she'll run to the, at the end of the game, she'll run on the field and give me a hug and say great game and stuff, even though she didn't watch the game. <laughs> but, um, and my cousin CJ, who ran for Coach Dean as well, who's playing um, um, at Utah, Southern Utah right now, mm -hmm. um, he, um, that's my cousin. So our whole family will come to the game, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mom my uncles my aunts um my cousins will all be at the game so it'll be a big family affair um so it it, it keeps us kind of grounded um and everybody all my coaches know it's like i'm gonna go all out in football she knows it my wife knows it and um you know once uh football season's over it's her time and that's the time that since she was a baby that I have my bonding time with her on the track and field and stuff like that. And my wife is around and my, 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 my youngest one is around. So we're around each other. And, and I try to tell my coaches and parents, some don't understand, but some do. Mm -hmm. uh, well, most do. 
Um, but some don't understand because they want me to go football year round. I'm like, no, nah, track time is is my daughter's time, right. and that's the time. Even though if she doesn't get to run, she's just out practicing. Just me watching her grow up and and do her thing is just a joy to me. So that's so, the, that's the hard thing about it. So let me ask you this question. You know, a lot of coaches have tradition. Um, like they, they might eat one boiled egg in the morning before a game because that's a part of their tradition. Do you have any like routines or traditions that you do before a game? Yes, definitely. We have a couple of traditions. So one of our traditions that um, means a lot to me is every year we, we stay in a hotel. Yes. Our first. So either if we're out of town, like we go to Vegas, sometimes we play a Vegas team. Yes. Or we're, if we play in San Diego, we stay at the Omni Hotel. This year, we're staying at the Omni Suites. The Omni Suites, I'm sorry. And I was going to say, that's a new hotel, the Omni Suites. I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to the Omni Suites? Uh, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, try to, we try to give them an experience that some never had. And, and mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it because we, we had some kids one time brought their own towels to the hotel. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, and we're like, no, you have towels in there. Like, we get to keep our own towels. And then we had one of the coaches one time, uh, he kind of yelled at one of our kids because he wore the robe in his room around <laughs> the meeting and everything. And I said, let him, let him get this experience. Coach. Right. And uh, so, you know, stuff like that is the inspiring part. You know, these kids never been to a hotel. Yes. And, and we take them through a whole thing as far as they stay overnight with each other. We have team, and they think they have fun all day, but we have so many things planned. They have meetings after meetings, meetings about meetings. We have team dinner. We have a movie night. We have a talent show, um, a comedy night where they get to clown all the coaches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then it's back to work um, where we're focusing on the team that we're facing and we're going over the X's and O's. They wake up, they have breakfast, and take them back to the school and get ready for the game. So wow. he's, he's teaching them college stuff because that's yeah. how a college program is. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, the NFL, there's, yeah, there's yes. a, Correct. yeah. So, Correct. so that, that, that's really uh, important. And so yes. for parents that are looking for programs uh, to get their children yes. in, um, I love the fact that you're a strong academic program, mm -hmm. um, a strong morals program, mm -hmm. and then you give them life experiences so that they don't have these go somewhere else and lose their mind because they never experienced that. Right. So that that is amazing. Here's my last question for Miss Cece. You know, uh, Cece, what is your uh, do you have a food regiment routine? No. Okay. <laughs> I kind of just eat whatever. Uh, I try to stay as healthy as possible, but sometimes I don't make it through. Yeah, Daddy. But like, Daddy, can you go to a taco shop? I like a, a cut inside a burrito and some chips. You know, yeah. I'll run it off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's now, cool. Lastly, let's talk about your um, foundation, which I think is very important because he's a giver. Mm -hmm. He's always finding a way to bless other people, and that's why he and his family is so blessed. Okay. Definitely. That that is one of the reasons why <laughs> I believe just giving back. I'm paying it forward. And like I said, Coach Glenn did so much for me. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my thing was doing the same thing for kids that came in front of me. And a lot of times, um I get a lot of kids that remind me of um myself growing up. Um and you know, I wanna try to help them out as much as I can. But um uh, how I came up with my foundation, it was a young lady. Um, she was our, well, it was two, two kids, but it was a young lady. She was a manager on my team and she was a four point, like five student. Um, she, um, wasn't, a a, a legal resident, um, but she was on, she was over here from some, I forgot what it, what it was, but they allowed her to like be Like a over. visa. What was that? It's like a visa they have that you can. Yeah. Something. Yeah. So she was, she was allowed to be over here and. All our kids, you know, every year, sports-wise, you know, academic, whatever, I always want to know what their next plans are, if we can help them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through all my football players, and I'm like, where are you going to school? And they're telling me where they're going to school. And then I asked her, where, where are you going to school? Because I know she won almost every academic award there. And she says, well, I wanted to go to UCLA, but um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get in because I was an illegal um, resident. Mm -hmm. And um, then she wanted to go to, I think, City College. And then she said that, um, that it was too expensive to go to City College. I'm like, City College is too expensive. Right. And um, so then that 
opened up the doors for me far as to say, you know, we got, I have so many kids because I, I have a kid that myself and Coach Dean both coach. He went to Princeton. Yes. Um, he's there right now doing very the well. The number one academic school in America. America, yeah. And um, we get a lot of these kids and, you know, they can get into these big time schools, but they, they don't have any funding for it. Right. Mm -hmm. So my thing was like, hey, how, how could I have helped her, even though she couldn't get into the school that she wanted to go to, mm -hmm. to get funding for the other school that she could go to? Right. Well, she, she was a manager, gave everything she had for the team for as always out there with the water bottles, helping wash the, the jerseys and stuff like that, doing the things that the managers do with the, the high schools. But it was no giving back to her when it came to wow. the money situation. Wow. Um, so that's that's how it all started, why I wanted to start this. Also, I wanted to start because we get a lot of our teachers and our coaches who are teachers as well that don't get the big accolades. I um, I want coach of the year. I want every coach accolade you can win as um, far as coaching football, mm -hmm. which in two years before that, I couldn't even fathom winning these awards. Right. Um, especially, um, you know, it, it, the climate that we're in, it just – you know, it's getting better, but you just don't see it. Right. Um, my first, the first black head coach I've ever seen coach was coach Tony Jackson, which was like amazing to me, right. mind boggling. Right. Now we have like seven, which is crazy in, in the history of San Diego. Right. But um, to see, um, to see him was like inspiring. Well, I never thought I would win these awards because you don't see it often, but it took two undefeated seasons and a state championship to get them when you have other coaches that <clears throat> I'll say this, I know I'm talking long, but I'll say this, um, me coaching, um, uh, our state team, they was already a, a, a well oiled machine, right? The machine, it, it was ready to go to get them there was hard, but once it was there, it was very easy to coach them. Mm -hmm. My hardest time, um, the best time coaching and the hardest is when you're really coaching teams up. So when you look at like a coach Dean, who um, is always in the CIF championships with track and he doesn't have the, the marquee athletes. Mm -hmm. He's coaching harder than the, the coaches that have all the mega stars, but mm -hmm. the coaches that have all the mega stars, um, they get all the athletes. Always. To me, it's like, well, you know, and also teachers, when you look at teachers that are going out of their own pocket, yes. doing so much for kids and Miss Tay Oliver started a, um, a pantry at Morris High School where she was clothing, feeding homeless kids that people didn't even know about. Nobody knows about this pantry. Um, wow. Those are things that go above and beyond. And she ran for Coach She Dean. ran track for me. Um, so she won our Teacher of the Year last year, and Coach Dean won our Coach of the Year this year because these are these are people who have done more than a lot of coaches that get all the accolades, has gone above and beyond. But not only that, Coach Dean has won multiple – it's like – 18 championships so i mean all the accolades are there and then we're going above and beyond but we're not doing it. so i wanted to start something to where i wanted to give notoriety to people who are putting in the work mm -hmm. that just they're not going to get seen because of the politic things yeah. that go on That's sometimes I, I, I feel you on that one you know, because yeah. I still haven't got my eight-inch uh, award yet. <laughs> well, we're we gonna print you and, one up. And, and I was, I was the champion right. for years. We're we gonna print you one up. Yeah. <laughs> How so, can we help you? What, yeah. what can we do? Because he, he, he works for the school district as well, and um, and he's in the community, NAACP um, person as well. What can people that are watching do to help you all? Because I think it's important that we invest in what you're doing because it's helping other young people, which is our future. We talk about the kids being bad and the kids doing this. Well, let's give them uh, some help. Let's give them some well, guidance. Well, well, I think that, first of all, one of the things that we want to put out there, it doesn't matter what high school he's at. Right. I know because we've all gone to different high schools oh, yeah. and everything like that. Oh, yeah. um, I think that he, he also has um, – the thing I celebrate is that you really uh, coach a multicultural team. Yep. You know, um, and where they say that African Americans and Latinos, everybody don't get along. You're literally showing that it is mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. and that you can show leadership. So um, I work with schools in the downtown area, so I know about the immigration issues, mm -hmm. the homeless issues, yep. and and um, I actually have a couple of kids that are at your school that literally. Um, 
have gone through tremendous uh, strives wow. to literally go to school every day and still live in a homeless shelter, their car, whatever. And so uh, school becomes a part of their safety zone. Right. So the question comes in is how do we seed in and support what you're doing to make an impact on a region of young people and their families? That's the question I want right. to say. How can we help with that? Most definitely. Um, well, you can go to my website, um, Charles James Education Foundation dot org. Um, my contacts on there, my email, you can email me there. Anybody that wants to help and support in any type of way, more than welcome. We can sit down and, and figure out how you because it doesn't always have to be monetary. Right. So we can figure out somehow that you can help the organization. Um, we're growing. This is our second year and um, me being you know, a coach, sometimes I can't really take full focus on it until mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, after football season or something, but I'm still dibbling and dabbling the whole time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Coach Jimmy Pham has joined our organization this year as well. Wow. So we're getting stronger, but um, monetize, um, monetary, um, any, any donations you guys can make. The good thing about my foundation is this. I know it's a lot of foundations. I'm not here to talk about other foundations, but um, there are some foundations that kids told me that they did multiple things for or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, when it was come back to get that support, that help, they mm -hmm. didn't get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, with us, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, the COVID kind of stopped us where our bank was at to be online. Mm -hmm. Next year, we'll be back in um, the hall. Our first bank was supposed to be at the Marina Village. Well, mm -hmm. with this, what we wanted to do is actually bring in those donators where you actually see where your money is going. Right. And I think that's the beauty of ours because sometimes people donate and they're like, well, where did it go? Right. You actually get the meat. And so we wanted you to meet, sit down, have a nice meal, meet the student that you're supporting um, and actually help um, in the whole process um, throughout. So we have some supporters uh, from New Orleans um, mm -hmm. and every year they get to meet the kids that they donate to. Mm -hmm. That's great. They're so uh, great people and just so happy to help and, and they stay in contact with these students. Good, good. And so it's not a, I thought I helped somebody, right. uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, this is what this went for. And, um, uh, you know, I think that's the beauty of what we're trying to do. So yeah. any, you can reach out to me, any, if, if you're a media person, mm -hmm. I do all our media stuff. Yeah. And um, my website is ran by Jay Hackey, who's a teammate of mine, graduate from Morris High School, college graduate. Mm -hmm. But I, I'll say this. I know I got some young some young kids in development. If, if you know how to do media, websites, any of that, we can put you in places to make this thing even go higher. So I'm looking for everybody that, that wants to support in some type of way. Well, let, let me let you know, I just got a, a media blurb uh, from the national media, and they're actually looking for families right now uh, that have been uh, – uh, vaccinated youth that have been vaccinated uh, as well as parents that have been vaccinated and they actually want to do a commercial uh, and they will pay the families uh, 750 for four hours of their time uh, but they have to be vaccinated uh, so if you know of anybody in your camp or would that want to just uh, say look 750 750 dollars yeah so I need to go adopt a kid <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, those are the kind of ways that we also raise money because there are opportunities that come in. And so if you have someone in your organization or a couple of families that are interested, hit us back up and we will get them connected with them. Uh, they can be on TV and see themselves on the video as well Seven as get feet. paid. No, that's a lot of money, man. Well, well, you know, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that other thing because, you know, they got today, they started giving out the $300 for uh, the, the family relief fund. So uh families are getting it man uh, you got two kids you, you might have came up today <laughs> well we make a lot more so we might not get it <laughs> I, I know but I, I was hoping that he wouldn't say that because you know uh, i work for the education i'm like saying i got 391 kids can uh right can, 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 you, can, 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 you know i i i call uh president biden and everything right. look over my career, I have I have worked with over ten thousand two hundred twenty one kids, right. and they still calling me to this day. Right? Can I just get a quarter a of that? Right. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure yes, meeting uh, both of you. Would love to have you all in the studio.
studio. CC, I, I expect big things from you. We have some young people's program here uh, at the radio station because we're building a youth program. So if you ever want to get on the air, we want to see you up here too that we can sow into your life also. Any final words, family? Yes, I, I want to thank you guys for having us on today. Um, I've watched the show, very professional, and the, and the people that you guys have on are very inspiring and entertaining at the same time. Um, this is a great show, uh, so everybody out there get behind and support it. I'll support it as well on my platform, but you guys are doing a great job, and I love the way you guys do it. And and I've watched you. Um, you're, the, you're the producer in area. I see your hands moving. You, you're you turning cameras and everything. He's very good. talented. He does everything. I'm, we might need your services to be the our announcer for our football games. I might. <laughs> hey, I want you. I want you to see this new technology that yep. you're gonna love. And well, we'll, we'll get offline and we'll talk. Right. Uh, but I'll come and visit yeah. you. All righty. Yes. Good. Robert Earl. And I just want to say, CC, I'm so proud of you. I know I'm your head coach, but even beyond that, if I wasn't, you are a class act, and I see nothing but greatness. And I hope she goes to San Diego State University because well, you know well, I'm an Aztec well, like you. Yeah, and I laugh because <laughs> you know, you know, if you know Coach Dean, Coach Dean is over the top. So when he, when he, when we were talking about scheduling this interview, um, I was like, well, uh, did you spell the names wrong or whatever? Because I, I, it was like a double name, and I'm right. like, and he said, oh no, 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 and then he started talking about you, and if, if I didn't know you weren't his daughter or his niece or whatever, because it was like he was so excited about you as a person. And then he then talked about your parents and everything like that. And I, th and I think that um, I, I encourage young people to realize that haters will be with you always. They'll hate you if you're too pretty. They'll hate right. you if you're too tall. There's right. all that. But when you know who you are and you present yourself in a way, there are people that will just go over and beyond the call of duty to support you because they see you doing the work. And so we want to encourage you to continue to do the work and represent the family well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Robert, you have anything else? No, I'm just, just honored that, she, that they will be on the show. These right. two are just on here. Okay. Blackston. You, oh, okay, you yeah. Some stuff from yeah, her. Yeah, got my beer stuff. That, you know, that's his, yeah. that's his auntie. Yes. Right? That's okay. his mom's sister. Okay. Wow, okay. the family is big. The family, and they're doing wait, big wait, stuff. Wait, wait, wait. can't we come over for the barbecue? I, I, I just want to come over oh, and get... Oh, he's a I've been, He's a barbecue. I just want to get a piece of rib. This one rib. He's a barbecue. I'm you telling know. you what I know. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, family. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll be staying tuned. Yes. Hit us back up. You know how to get us. Yes. And uh, and this is Cavers, right? Yes. Seven okay. Cavers. Yes. Look at that big SD. I, I saw it. I just didn't, I didn't want to be wrong because I could have stood for San Diego. You know, uh, 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 it could have stood for U USD or something. I don't want to get in any trouble. <laughs> I just assumed that he was a caver mm. with, with all the things. But yes, sir. Okay. Well, see, 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 Robert tripping. Oh no, I no, I said that. I'm, I'm, he gave me that it, it, that indignant look. Like, no, no, you didn't have to guess that no, he was no. a caver or not. No, it's all good. just caver for life. It's all good. Blue watch on. <laughs> right, it's all good. <laughs> all right, everybody. You know what? We're gonna play this song uh, by uh, Pastor Norman Hutchins, and that's on the battlefield, running for my life. Y'all yeah. might be on the battlefield, but as you keep on running and striving, God is gonna give you your victory. Yeah. Right here on GLD Radio One. Dot com. Mm -hmm. 